my name is Sergio Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is entitled Pills, Pills and More Pills. In um, 28 years of being a, a doctor, um, I have rarely ever, ever, ever come across a single patient who says, I wish you could give me more pills. Everyone universally feels that they're taking too many pills. Uh, the title of this post has been inspired by a post by my friend Jean. Jean um, is a very, very kind uh, person who says the nicest things about me. And she posted on a, on a forum and uh, the post was entitled Pills, Pills and More Pills, where she bemoaned the number of pills she was being given and the fact that no one actually took these pills off. They were just giving her pills and no one was actually taking them off. So she was on an ever increasing number of pills, many of which caused her side effects as well. So today I thought I would do a series of videos on the subject of pills, pills and more pills. In particular, in the first segment, I'll tell you why people are so on so many pills. And then uh, as a follow on from this, I'll tell you how to try and make sense of the pills you're on and how to actually start reducing your pills. So I hope that I will be able to empower you to do this and have a meaningful conversation with your doctor and convince him that actually all these pills are not really doing you uh, a great deal of good. Before I get started, I just wanted to tell you about the Heart Health Seminar in New York. That is happening on the 4th and 5th of August in Westchester, New York. I'll be there on the 4th. I'll do a series of lectures on a variety of heart health conditions. And then on the 5th, there is the opportunity where you can have a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with me uh, where you can ask me about your specific case and I can try and answer the questions to the best of my ability. So if you are in New York or uh, if you fancy a trip down to New York, uh, please consider registering for this on www.hearthealthweekend.com. Closing date is the 30th of August, so it would be really great if you could uh, register before then. Uh, I would love to see you there. Thank you so much. Okay, so now let's talk about pills, okay? The first thing to say is that there is no doubt that we give too many pills. And I just wanted to go through some of the reasons for this. Um, and then later on, I'll, in my next video, I'll talk about how to come off the pills. The first thing to say is that um, pills are inherently profitable. Okay, they, the uh, pills make money. So um, pharmaceutical companies profit in a big deal, by uh, in a big way by um, uh, marketing these pills. It is in their interest to run big research studies, uh, which are geared to demonstrate that their tablet is better than the current recommended tablet, or it is better than nothing. Uh, so because most of the research uh, is most of the research that is being done is so expensive to run. The only people who have that kind of money to run this research are the big pharmaceutical companies because they have a vested interest in their product being successful. And therefore, because all the evidence is accrued on the basis of these big research studies, this is what is used, the pills. Uh, the second thing to say is um, the uh, pills represent a an easy, quick fix, right, with instant gratification. So um what tends to happen is you know these days doctors actually don't have very much time to see patients so when you go into a consultation room you get what six ten minutes at most to see a doctor and the idea that actually you've waited two or three months to go and see this doctor and for you to be able to get all that out and make him understand what's going on and see you as a whole person in 10 minutes, that's a, that's a very difficult thing to do. So for a lot of people, it's far easier as a doctor to say, OK, well, this person has come. I'm not going to be interested in anything else that's going on with this person. I'm only going to look at my little bit, the thing I know about or the thing I specialize in. And the easy way to sort this out is by giving this patient a pill, because if she feels better, she'll think she's okay and that's it and out of the door and I can see my next patient this is the reality this is what happens I'm I'm guilty of that in my own practice from time to time because when I see a patient who has a huge set of notes who has diabetes high blood pressure being overweight uh, who's had three heart attacks two strokes uh, who's depressed who's got uh, chronic arthritis etc you get this huge set of notes and then uh, you you're given six minutes how do you go about tackling that? Because that's all the time you have. And therefore, in some ways, you end up sort of choosing to ignore everything else that's going on with the patient and just looking at your little bit. This is an inherent fault of our system. And really, it's something that we need to address uh, to allow us to be better doctors for our patients. 
So that's another reason. The third reason is, of course, that actually uh, a lot of doctors, you know, the training for doctors has been cut shorter and shorter because the government just wants more doctors. They're not worried about having more qualified, more uh, all-rounded doctors. They just want to get the doctors off the kind of, um, you know, supply chain. Uh, so <clears throat> um, a lot of doctors now uh, are less qualified and uh, sort of less holistic than before. And that also in some way contributes because it's largely about get them in, get them out. These days, the measure of a productive doctor, certainly in my country, in the UK, is not a doctor who is effective in getting the patient better and addressing the patient, but a productive doctor is a doctor who gets as many patients in and out through the door in a set time. That is the definition of a productive doctor, which is terrible, really, because all you want is you want to do, even if you see one patient, what you want to feel as a doctor is you want to feel that you've done good by them, you have addressed their problem, you have reassured them, you have empowered them, you've seen them as a complete person, but that doesn't happen because unfortunately the pressures are such, um, the hospital managers and the politicians want as many people seen uh, as quickly as possible. The next problem with pills is this, that actually what we know is that uh, a lot of our uh, problems these days, chronic disease, 90% of chronic disease is lifestyle related according to the WHO. So 90% of chronic disease is lifestyle related. Uh, and the problem with that is that people lead bad lifestyles. They work too hard, they're too stressed, they're unhappy, uh, they eat the wrong stuff, they don't exercise, they don't sleep. And all those things combine over a number of years to cause chronic disease. When you then, when the body then manifests with high blood pressure, the blood, the body is telling, the, what the body is trying to say is that, look, I don't like all the kind of pressures that I'm being put under, okay? And that manifests as high blood pressure. Unfortunately, what we do these days is we say, okay, well, the number is a little bit high. Let's just give him a pill and make the number look a bit better. It is too difficult for a lot of doctors to actually get around and have that difficult conversation with the patient saying, actually, if I give you this pill, all I'm doing is making myself feel better because your number will look a bit nicer, uh, but I'm not actually getting you better. And because I'm because the patient will think, oh, I've been given this tablet, this is now my blood pressure is fine, and they'll continue to do the same things that cause the blood pressure to rise in the first place. After a few months, the blood pressure will rise further because they'll continue to do the same things. And then the doctor will give them another tablet. So now they're on two tablets, and before you know it, they'll be on three or four tablets. And then these tablets will cause side effects, like making them tired, making them worn out, making them dizzy, and then it becomes too difficult to try and take some of those tablets out or try and work out which tablet is doing what. And so the easier thing is just to give them another tablet to sort out the side effect. So now the patient is on five different tablets. So it's absolutely crazy. The whole world is going mad. Uh, you know, there is a pill for everything and actually hardly any pill sorts the underlying problem out, which is what we should do. Uh, a large number of times what can be done is actually if the person's blood pressure is high and if you have a nice meaningful chat with the patient and then educate them on this and empower them and say, look, you know, what are you doing it for? Your blood, your body is not happy. Why are you working so hard? Why are you depriving your children of the time that you could be spending with them? Um, because none of this is good for your health and is probably not even making you happy. Um, once you empower them, then sometimes the, the, the committed patient will take a step back and say, you're right, you know, I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start doing the things I enjoy. I'm going to start living in the moment rather than building for some future which may or may not exist 20 years down the line. And when they do that, not only does their quality of life improve, but all the numbers just automatically get better. And actually, that takes a little bit of time. That takes, uh, it is important to build rapport and for the patient to have confidence in you and for them to know that actually what you're saying may be a difficult thing to do in principle, but it is undoubtedly the right thing to do in principle. The idea that actually if we abuse our bodies for 20 years, uh, you cannot sort that out with a tablet one day. You, it needs behavior change. It needs a person to evaluate their life and really make a change in their lifestyle and a change which is uh, thought of, uh, which is gradual, but progressive. 
Uh, so those are lots of reasons why there are so many pills about. OK, and there is no doubt. In fact, there, I was reading a, a study recently which said that in terms of healthcare related, uh, in terms of illnesses now, um, after heart disease and cancer, prison medicine it causes more illness than anything else. So, you know, the the over reliance on prescription of um, medicines, antidepressants, anti-anxiolytics, tons of medicines, because they all have side effects, they can all lead to things like falls, particularly in the, in the elderly, and the um, antiplatelets, things like aspirin, could cause bleeding. So they're, they all have side effects, and some of these side effects can be quite dangerous. So basically, <laughs> this may sound like a bit of a rant, but the idea is that we're giving people too many pills and actually people don't need to be as on as many pills as uh, they've been given. And so in my next video, what I'm going to do is show you a method by which you can evaluate the pills you're on and try and work out uh, which pills really are making a difference to you and which pills aren't. And then hopefully you will be empowered to go and have a conversation with your doctor and come off some of these pills. So that is my aim. And I'm going to do this in my next video, which I shall try and post either tonight or tomorrow morning. So thank you for listening. Um, I am very grateful for all the kind comments that you leave me. My website is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. My Facebook page is Your Cardiology One. I have another Facebook page, but that only has a five 5,000 uh, friend uh, limit and I've actually thankfully reached that um, uh, but you know I would still love to hear from you so if you go to your cardiology one you we can be friends there and then uh, we can communicate thank you so much all the best